Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Athanasius Report, and I am your host, Athanasius. And I wish I could give you better news. Unfortunately, it's not a good way to end this week. For those who haven't heard, I don't know how you haven't, but for those who haven't heard, last night during a Black Lives Matter protest in Dallas, a sniper shot and killed five Dallas police officers, injured at least six or seven more, and also hit a couple civilians as well. And since that occurrence, there's been three other reported shootings of cops around the nation, from Tennessee to Georgia to Missouri. It's not a real good way to end this week, unfortunately. We had a few other incidents earlier this week involving the police, where two black men, one in Louisiana, one in Minnesota, were shot and killed by police during in the line of duty. Before continuing, I would ask if you could join me for a quick prayer for those that are suffering right now this past week, especially those who have lost loved ones and so forth, especially for the police officers. Lord, we hope that you will look down on this nation and have mercy on us. We hope that you bless and keep the families of the victims, those that have lost family members uh, in Dallas and elsewhere around the country, and those who have had family members attacked this week as well. We also ask that those officers that were slain this week, that you please take them and keep them up in your bosom, and that they may hopefully share in paradise, the joys of paradise soon. And to St. Michael the Archangel, the patron saint of all police officers, pray for every officer that is currently standing watch, protecting us and keeping us safe. And please also help guard them and help keep them safe as well. Amen. Now, getting back to the heart of the issue here, I wasn't planning to talk on these issues at all in my weekly vlog because I believe that since they are relatively new and not all the facts are out, I, I hate it when people start jumping to conclusions about what it is that happens in any of these police shootings. But since this is a focus of what happened in Dallas, I'm, I am going to talk about these things, starting with the Alton Sterling shooting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. For those that don't know what happened there, the details that have come out so far is that police were called uh, by an anonymous uh caller saying that they there was a black man outside of a gas station that was that had flashed a gun at him and so the police showed up an altercation ensued between uh, the two police officers and the the black man one uh, alter alton sterling and they got him on the ground and one of the police officers uh, ended up drawing their weapon and shooting alton sterling while he was on the ground killing him. This was the first incident that started raising the levels of racial tension across the nation. The second one occurred up in Minnesota when a cop during a routine trap stop, traffic stop pulled over a black man with his black girlfriend and I think it was their child in the back seat. The officer came up to the window, asked to see the uh, license registration, the black man, uh, Flandro Castile, told the officer that he had a concealed carry and he had a legitimate concealed carry. Uh, during the process, the black man went towards his pockets, presumably to get his identification. The cop drew his weapon and shot the black man, killing him in the car. His girlfriend pulled out her phone and started taking video of it and uh, live video and, start, and posted it on Facebook and so forth. And uh, these two incidents uh, sparked a number of Black Lives Matter protests to kick off across the nation simultaneously. There was protests in Oakland, in New York, and, and in Dallas. And last night at the Dallas Black Lives Matter protest, during the event, a sniper opened fire on police. And in the subsequent gun battle that ensued, five police officers lost their lives uh, at least six or seven were injured to a place for able to finally neutralize the gunman. 
our hearts and prayers go out to the victims and their families, and we hope that no more death will come of this. But unfortunately, I do not see that as the case, as not only could Dallas have been avoided, but every other cop shooting that has occurred within the last few years. I say this because we have a administration and a culture that is demonizing cops and has been doing so since Barack Obama has taken office. From the Cambridge Police incident to Ferguson to Baltimore, you see the president, the attorney general, and his lackeys time and time again come out and speak out against the police, calling them sometimes reckless, saying that there's a culture of discrimination amongst the boys in blue, saying that black people don't get a fair shake within this country, and so on and so forth. It is truly disgusting that our leaders, in a time of crisis and a time of hurt and suffering, they use this opportunity to politicize the event and try to cause more division and more pain and suffering rather than being what leaders are supposed to do, which is stand up and try to unite people, calm down tensions, and bring people back together in the bonds of unity, brotherhood, and love. But that is not what is happening here. And what is funny, if it wasn't so darn tragic, is the fact that this president and his administration are the same ones that are quick to tell us that, oh, we shouldn't demonize the entire Muslim community when one of them decides to go and blow themselves up or shoot up a gay club or whatever. No, we, we can't do that. That was just a lone incident. We also can't, you know, say that illegal aliens are to blame for a lot of the rise in crime, in, especially along the border states, and that, you know, drugs and so forth are coming over the borders because, after all, they're, they're coming over here for love and for, for, to try to find opportunities and so forth. No, we can't make generalizations about them as well. But cops... Cops are racist. Cops target the black man. The black people are should be afraid of the cops because the cops are out to get them. They want to kill them and so forth. This is what you hear every time one of these incidents happens. And it's a cr complete crock of hooey. And it is this racist stupidity that I am calling out, not only the president, the attorney general, but every other Black Lives Matter supporters and, the, and whoever buys into this notion that police are systematically looking to kill blacks. I am calling all of you out. This is a racist, bigoted, idiotic statement to say. Not every cop. In fact, I would say that maybe, maybe a handful of cops across the entire nation are truly racist. Most police stations do a darn good job weeding out the racists, the idiots, those that are power hungry and so forth, and making sure that their force acts professional, acts with integrity, and acts with fairness towards everybody. You can't honestly tell me that cops are racist when FBI stats point to the fact that more white people are killed by police than black people. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that there is any sort of racist bigotry towards black people. No, it is not racism on the part of the cops. It is stupidity of a culture that unfortunately accepts the thug life, that accepts committing crimes, shooting guns, treating women like dirt, and doing drugs, and F the police and pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. I mean, you want to know why cops are on edge when it comes to you know black people? It's because statistically speaking, cops are more likely to be shot by black people. This is a proven fact. FBI backs up this data. This is not me just throwing out numbers here. These, da these numbers can be looked up. For them to say that it's somehow the cops' fault is not only a complete lie, but it is also a tragedy that you would group an entire brotherhood. You would take the entire police fraternity and say that because of maybe one bad apple every couple of years that does something stupid, like with what happened up in the Carolinas where, yes, there was a cop that shot a black man who was running away in the back. That is you know, as far as I can tell, was unjustified. But to say that that one incident somehow says 
that the entire police fraternity is racist is bunk. It is bull. And I am tired of people like the president and Attorney General Lynch who have no experience other than being agitators, who have no experience knowing what it is like to actually work for their lives, who probably have never even ridden in a cop car and and gotten to see what these cops go through on a daily basis. They probably never even turned on, what what was it, Fox Cops, you know, that, that show there where they have the cameraman following cops around. I mean, anybody that's ever watched that show, and I watched that show religiously as a kid when I could, anybody that's ever watched that show, you see what police go through. And you see that they are not the racist bigots that the media, the president, and so on and so forth make them out to be. These guys are doing their job. They're putting their lives on the line every night. And anytime one of these incidents occurs, yes, it is a tragedy, but it is also, you know, something that happens in the line of duty. Mistakes can be made, but not every time a cop shoots a black man is it a mistake or is it because of racism and so forth. And the other thing that I find really, really irritating and aggravating about this is that they are quick to call out, quote-unquote, white cops for shooting black people. Why don't you call out black cops for shooting white people? Why don't you call Hispanic cops for shooting black people? Or white cops for shooting Hispanic? Why is it that whenever a white cop shoots a black person, all of a sudden everybody's got to riot, everybody's got to tear up the town, but... You know, any, any any of the other you know hundreds upon hundreds of police shootings that happen it, throughout the year, nobody really says anything, other than you know your local report. There, we had another shooting today. A gunman got into a battle outside of the blah 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 apartments, and the gunman was killed. The police are okay, and now back to the news. Racism. I mean, that's what it is. They they they. This is complete and utter bull. And anybody that doesn't see it for what it is, you really need to pull your head out of whatever orifice you got it stuck into. Another wrinkle to this that is especially irritating is the fact that cops are never given due process. Anytime a cop shoots a black man, he's automatically guilty in the public eye. The media condemn him. Virtual lynch mobs go out on their social pages and try to, you know, demonize demonize him and so forth. Meanwhile, if a, you know, black man gets arrested or whatever, he should be afforded every due process rights. And the double standard is stupid. The double standard is another issue that is driving this country apart. We have to stop pussyfooting around this issue and address it for what it is. If you're going to give due process for one group of people, you give due process for everybody in the nation. That includes cops. If a cop shoots somebody, instead of immediately jumping to racism or some other stupid phony baloney excuse, Instead, say, you know what? Yes, there was a shooting today. We are looking into it. We are investigating it. We are going to find out the facts, and then we're going to get back to you on it. But no, that's not what happens. The media takes this story, a white cop shooting a black man or Hispanic cop shooting by whatever it is. Black man gets shot by cop. All of a sudden, it's racism. It is an epidemic across the nation. It is cops systematically hunting down, putting bounties on blacks. It's, it's the president coming out. Out and saying that the police are, you know, morons essentially, racist bigots and so forth. It is, oh man, if I could actually say what I really want to say here, I have to bleep myself out every second because it is just, I am so angry at this. I am so tired of this double standard. It is, a, it is not enough that these people get their, these cops that unfortunately get involved in these shootings have their lives destroyed like Darren Wilson out in Ferguson the guy had to quit the force and now he's in hiding he's been in hiding ever since what happened in Ferguson because of the level of violence that's been directed towards him and his family the poor guy I don't know if he'll ever get another job again because who wants to hire somebody that is you know as a toxic as him but that's what's happening you know these cops these cops get demonized they have essentially a lynch mob Coming, coming out for them for doing their job. And, and if there's any black people watching here, I have to ask you, okay? I, I legitimately have to ask you this. Your forefathers decried 
the racism and the lynching of the Old South, okay, right after the Civil War. They decried what happened to a number of innocent black people that just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Why, then, are you participating or supporting this be the exact same behavior? Don't tell me that, oh, well, it's different now that, you know, it's black, you know, going after whites. No, no, it's the same thing, okay? It doesn't matter if you switch the color palette around. It is still the exact same thing. And if you're not going to call out your brothers for doing the exact same thing that whites were doing to your uh, forefathers back in the day, then you are hypocrites, and you really should shut up. And for those blacks that actually are speaking out against the double standard here, I applaud you. I thank you. I hope that your voice resounds more and more with your with everybody and that hopefully we can nip this thing in the bud and get the get the country back on track to get us to recognize the rule of law that it's that it doesn't matter what happens. Everybody is allowed their day in court. Everybody's allowed to present their side of the argument, to give evidence in defense of themselves, and that we need to stop with the public kangaroo court of lynchings. Now, as frustrating as these last two elements are, there is one that takes the cake. There is one that causes me to go into a fit of rage. And I gotta be honest, folks, here. I am going to try to do this as as passionately but without giving into my tendencies to use swear words it is going to be difficult though here we go the third aspect to this is the fact that outlets like twitter and facebook that rappers that uh, music that black musicians that black celebrities are not all of them but some of them are not condemning the violence that is happening in Dallas, Missouri, Tennessee, and across the nation where cops are being targeted. In fact, some of these outlets, some of these people are actually supporting it and even promoting it. Now, take a step back real quick and just let's turn the tables on this. Let's say that this was a white man shooting a bunch of black cops. And we know that the shooter in Dallas was a racist SOB because he admitted to cops that the reason why he went on this was went on this shooting spree was because he wanted to kill white people. Those are his words. You can look them up. In fact, they were even in the press conference by the Dallas police chief this morning. So let's just, you know, switch roles here. Let's say it was a white man that said he wanted to kill black people and he shot up a bunch of black cops and you had a bunch of white celebrities and white people coming out saying, yeah, kill the police. Yeah, kill the black man. And, you know, white people have been killing us or black people have been killing us for so many years. Now it's time for them to reap what they sow. So far, these are, I'm not joking. These are actual tweets and Facebook posts and so forth from black people, black celebrities. Twitter is not taking them down. Not only is this such a double standard, but it is such a blatant supporting of injustice, of violence, and so forth that should not be allowed in civil society. When you have the sister of the shooter coming on and saying things like, White people kill us, so we kill them back. And supporting, in essence, what her brother had done. When you have a rapper by the name of Young Buck, who I honestly, oh God, if I could call him what I really want to call him, who tweeted out, now let's shoot back at these crooked ass police. And then also had a song, that ta uh, put out a song the same day talking about, you know, let's go and riot, all right? F the buckle cop, I'm talking heat him up smiling. We don't turn the left cheat N-word. We, with the violence, potato on the barrel, make the chopper stay silent. 
you have people like this. You have and then Beyonce with her stupid halftime show this year that that Black Power, you know, Black Panther tribute that you know, if it again, if this had been a white person and you had seen a number of these celebrities doing white power, black or white power, white snipers, you know, take out the darkie, shoot shoot the n words and all that stuff. How quick in this nation would we be, you know, fired up to condemn this and condemn everybody involved in here? But, you know, when it's, you know, a black man, you know, saying that he wants to kill white people, the president, the attorney general, and all these other outlets just gloss over that and try to pivot away and try to say, oh, no, it, it's about guns and we have to keep high-powered guns out of the hands of... It. No, no, it's not guns. It's racism. It's racism on the part of the black community that you know that is fostering this toxic environment that is, that is telling its children that it's okay to hate whitey, that it's okay to discriminate against the cracker because, after all, that's what they did to us before. No, that is not right. Just because something happened in the past does not give you the, ex- the excuse or the reasoning to continue it in the future. That is not what Dr. Martin Luther King marched for. He marched so that one day we could all be equal, that we could all drink from the same fountain of justice, that we didn't look at each other and see colors, but we saw the character of every man and woman and child. That is why he marched. And he would never condone any of the violent acts from the Black Lives Movement or any, or any of these other movements. I mean, you, have a, you had a group on Facebook called the Black Power Political Organization that posted the day before the attack in Dallas this. More will be assassinated in the coming days. Do you like the work of our assassins? Get your own sniper rifle and join our thousands of sniper assassins worldwide in the fight against oppression. This comes a little after a year when screwy Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam put out a speech calling for 10,000 black men to join him in rising up and killing cops and the white man. Folks, if this was a white group saying this, everybody would be condemning it. But odd how silent our leaders and the media are in not saying a damn thing about this and not coming out and condemning the racism on the part of these black racist people. And it's high time that we stopped letting them get away with it. Sadly, it looks like it's going to have to fall to us, the common everyday man, to stand up and speak this truth. Because our leaders, the media, celebrities, anybody else in power is not going to do that. They are not going to acknowledge the fact that there are racists in every group. Not everybody is a racist, but there are some that believe that one group should be superior to the other. This sniper in Dallas was one such person. He believed that because of the transgressions of the white people, that that somehow made him superior above the law, take it into his own hands, and dish out what he felt was justice. It was not justice. It was murder. It was flat-out evil. And we need to stop dancing around this subject. We need to stop trying to say that racism is a one-way street, that only whites can be racist to other minorities. That is a crock. It is time that we say, you know, everybody has the tendency to be a racist. But that's all it is, is a tendency. It is not an affirmation of racism. And it is not an affirmation of racism to say that one particular group needs to fix their stuff and pull their act together. And I'm looking across the board here. I don't care if you're white, if you're black, if you're yellow, if you're red. I don't care. If you see something... If you see someone screwing up in your community, call them out. If you hear somebody dehumanizing another person 
based on where they come from in the race. That's wrong. I'm, I'm talking about those people that say, you know what, we need to kill the whitey. We need to kill the darky. We need to, you know, whatever it is, anything like that. We need to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. Everybody deserves the right to live. Nobody has the right to unjustly take another's life, regardless of whatever past generational transgressions there may have transpired. I come from Irish heritage. Do you want me to go into the history of how poorly we've been treated through the centuries, especially when we came to the new world here? No, it would take me way too long to go through all the transgressions that happened, some of them far worse than what happened to the blacks or the Chinese or any other group that came to this country. But you know what? We don't let it get us down. Yeah, we have some songs that remember the bad times. Yeah, we have a pint or two when we sing those songs in, in sad remembrance. But we've moved on. And that's exactly what the black community needs to do. Whatever transgressions happened in the past, move past it. It's over. Racism is dead. And that comes, by the way, from a couple of young black men that I ran to, ran into while I was in the Navy. I won't go into details about the incident, but the, the punchline to that story was these two looked me dead in the eye and said, Dude, racism is dead. Just let it go. If these two could let it go, if these two could move past the racial divides and just say, You know what? We're just people. We're all Americans. Let's all stop dividing ourselves. Let's stop calling ourselves African American or Hispanic American or what have you. And let's just say, no, we're American. Let's move past the fact that this country made some mistakes in the past, but we fought a war and killed hundreds of thousands of our own people, white people majority, I should add, to correct that mistake, and that there were many more that stood with Martin Luther King and marching for equal rights for everybody. It's time people to stop this. It is time to say that the Black Lives Matter movement is a racist organization. They are bent on causing chaos, on causing more division, and they are certainly not helping in bringing this country together. If you want to protest and stand up and speak out against the conditions in your city, especially when it comes to police relations, fine. I don't have a problem with that. But keep in mind that it's not just your community that gets affected by this. Going back to that show, Cops, you look at the people that they run into. It's a mixed bag. You have whites, you have blacks, you have Hispanics, you have Asians. There isn't a racist overtone in the police force except in the minds of the president and the attorney general and Black Lives Matters. Please, people. Let's stop this. Let's come together on this and say not black lives matter, but all lives matter. All lives, regardless of where they came from, regardless of the color of the skin, regardless if they're a cop or not, all lives matter.